What's good? Welcome to the first uh, little rant review that I'm doing here. Now I'm just going to... First introduction, just doing like, you know, select games that I like. Anything like that. Shit talk, criticism, you name it. You know, basic stuff. I'm talk about what I like about it. Talk about what I dislike about it. And basically start a conversation about the old games. Or new games. So, this first game I'm going to be talking about is one of my now personal favorites, Grimlord. Yeah, Grimlord is an amazing VR Dark Souls game. And they and they're just they're so what I like about it is they're very prideful of it. And it's a shame that it didn't win VR game of the year or something like that. Some other stupid game won. Very sad. Cause that game had potential. You know what it is too? This is a controversial take. This is a toxic take. But I personally believe the reason why games like that didn't win is because that game requires you to actually be physical. And a lot of gamers today do just like to sit on their asses. Personally, I don't like to do it, but I don't have a big enough desk because I'm so massive, you know? I need a massive play area to even do anything. So, Grimlord, what's so great about it, you ask? Well, it's basically Dark Souls in VR. The, um, the company known as Metal Cat Studios that designed this beautiful game is... You, you you know, you could just tell they loved the series so much. They thought, hey, what, what would it be like to have Dark Souls in VR? And it works. It's it's just amazing. The, the You could tell if when you play the game, you have to play it to understand it. If you play Dark Souls and you put on the helmet and play this game, you're going to see the resemblance, the nods. And I haven't found any Easter eggs, but I'm not much of an Easter egg hunter, but I'm sure there's going to be some out there. The devs are really cool. I've I've spoken to I think two of them on their Discord and their uh, Twitter. So they're good people. I can tell these people really care about their game and they really respect the Souls genre from from software. So the music in this game, well, there hardly is any music to be honest. I don't even know if there's a Firelink Shrine song because. A lot of these games, sometimes I lower the music because I want to hear the actual atmosphere, which I'll get to that with the atmosphere. But the music that does play is in the bosses. And what's interesting is the same song plays for those bosses, except when you get to the final boss of this area, which I found quite interesting. But yeah, there is no music, only for boss fights. I don't remember exactly if there is a song in their own Firelink Shrine, Grimlord's Firelink Shrine. But... If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's some examples of what I'm talking about with the whole no music transitioning to music. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I am a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. The only, a little issue is there is a wind that plays. It's a constant sound that you hear in mostly anything these days. Cartoons, video games. But nothing wrong with that. It's supposed to add atmosphere. Obviously, this game is a little bit scary if you think about it. You're all alone in this crazy world run by monsters, weird things. Of course, it's a little unsettling and spooky. And, but the wind, though, if you really think about that wind that goes, you know, 
if you really think about it and do some research, the area that they're in is in a mountain. And if you've ever been to mountains, you constantly hear wind. You hear the wind blowing and blowing and blowing. And in medieval castles, there's windows that don't have glass, obviously. Those windows are meant for the archers and stuff like that. Wind does travel through castles and makes that noise. There is reports of that. There is research behind it. Well, little research because it's common sense, really. But it, it if you're one of those people that's that's kind of like, I can't, I think OCD or something like that. I don't know the exact word. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. If that kind of stuff bothers you, eh, maybe, it'll, maybe you won't notice it because of all the, the hell you're going to be going through with this game. But... Honestly, I don't think it's that big a deal. It's just to add atmosphere. The weapons in this game are pretty cool. The whole blacksmith style is... The, the customization is, in, is insane. It has potential. It has potential to kind of like... See, okay, when you're playing VR, right? You got... Well, this isn't a weapon, but you got three sets of armor. You got your little mage robe... You got your leather armor for your thieves and stuff. And you got your steel plate armor, which is for, you know, knights, tanks, etc. like that. I think there is a slow me a slow mint of movement. I'm not sure I didn't test that. But it would make sense. But yeah, you don't see your armor, which is fine. I mean, if you're playing a VR game, you don't really see your body. So your look shouldn't really matter. You know, this isn't v VR chat, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... The weapon customization is actually really cool and it deserves a lot of praise. So you got all these weapons from a regular sword to this pirate sword. I think it's called a, a shittel. Shit, I don't know what it's called. I don't. I never can get these names right. You got staffs. You got daggers. You got axes, battle axes, great swords. You. I think you you can even use a hammer. A, a, a blacksmith's hammer, you, you'll find it when you get into the castle. The first place you go in, well, not the Firelink Shrine, but when you start, there's a freaking hammer on the floor and you could use it as a weapon. I've done it. It's been in shields too, obviously, you got shields. The shields ain't really customizable, but the only customization I could get. Oh, and there's a spear. The spear is, I'll get to that right now. But the, uh, so if you wanted a dagger, you could get a dagger, but you could change the handle. To not any handle, mind you, but a specific type of handle. There's like three different types of weapons. Like This is an example I can give. This weapon is not in the game. Here's a katana, for example. Say you like the katana's handle, but you like, uh, you like a double-edged uh, double blade. A regular little double-edged sword. You could change the blade to have that handle. You could even change the guard. The guard to protect your arm. Let's say you don't like... The katana's guard, you could replace that with a different guard. Like that's what that's fucking cool. Like that is really cool. It it kind of gives. It's like the devs say, well, they can't see their armor, so there is no personality there. But maybe we could change the weapons to give it a personality. That I think that's really cool. I think that's one of the coolest features in this game is that your personality is in the weapon. I wish you could change the color. The color would be cool. But you know, maybe when they release parts of the game or the full game i think they're going with a chapter road i'm not too sure i remember seeing it on twitter that they were talking about a chapter two i could be wrong you know anything can happen because it's still a developing game but yeah the weapon system is actually amazing the if pro tip <laughs> pro tip if you want an easy stroll in this game i highly recommend that you first you go watch the movie 300, and then you come back to Grimlord and pick up the spear and the shield. I guarantee you, you will coast through the game like nothing. You will you, that the oh the, the even the it's just so good. It's so good. You could um. You could actually just, just coast through it. I mean, the precision of the combat is actually pretty good. The only problem with the sword and shield, or the, the spear and the sword... Ugh, sorry. The only problem with the spear and the shield is that if you're trying to go with the protecting yourself and poking, poking at the face, remember you gotta hit the face, 
and uh, certain enemies will go down in probably one or two hits from the face. But if you use that shield and spear at the same time, sometimes your hand will accidentally grab onto the shield and you will drop your spear. But fortunately enough, you could when you drop your weapon, you could pick it up like telekinesis, like blades and sorcery. But their combat is way better than blades and sorcery. At least in my opinion, it's way better. Yeah, the spear will get you far. You could use the bottom of the spear as a weapon as well. Like, I think that's amazing. In fact, interesting note about the spear. So, the spear is obviously good for reach. So, if you were... In, and I think the devs mentioned that there's some kind of balancing with weapons. Like, there's an actual balance. So, if you were to... So, if you were to hold a spear in real life, if you hold it within the center, it's balanced, basically, right? And if you were to hold it... If you were to hold it further back to at least the back of the spear, you know, like the where the pole ends... Obviously, it's going to be heavy and it's not going to be very effective. But if you were to hold it closer to the spear's point, you would you would have, I guess you could say you would have a better chance of precision poking. Precision poking, sorry, I think I said that wrong. But the back of the spear is going to affect your character. It's going to touch your character with common sense. But what's really interesting and cool that if you're a skill, if you're a pro like me, you throw your spear up and you can grab it in certain parts and have like a, a comfortable balance of where you want to go with it. I think that's really cool. That I was really impressed. I'm not much of a spear guy, but I picked it up because I couldn't find a great sword that I liked. They have the style that I like, but unfortunately I couldn't find it. I think I know where it's at because I missed two treasure chests. That's another thing. That's where you find materials for the weapons. You Sometimes the enemies will drop, uh, they will drop uh, iron ignits, they will drop uh, leather, and sometimes you'll find them in treasure chests, leather, and stuff like that. So that's one way to to get the weapons that you want. But you need to find the actual weapon. You you don't just go to the blacksmith and and ask him to to make a weapon that you haven't seen yet. You need to go around areas and collect the paper that shows you how to make the sword it's only but it only comes with one picture so if i were to find a treasure chest i open up the piece of paper it's just a picture of the handle and it's like okay well now i gotta find the other one and you find the pole or the handle then you find the blade you find three pieces of the weapon and it yeah dude it, it's it's pretty cool that it want the game wants you to work for it which obviously other souls games does that but i think this is more unique The magic in this game is pretty cool. It's actually pretty creative. So like, it's not like Blades and Sorcery where you just hold your hand out and press the trigger button and it goes. No. In this game, you need a rod or pole, whatever you want to call it. You need a pole with a gem, which I think is a really cool feature in fantasy. Because gems, supposedly, you know, diamonds, rubies, sapphires, pearls, garnets. Some cultures consider them to be magical you know especially silver silver well there's no silver in this game or at least i don't think so maybe i haven't found it but no i don't think there's silver but silver is said to have magical properties same with gold but i think it's interesting that you get a stick all right you can find sticks almost anywhere i mean you need sticks anyways for the blacksmith to make you weapons because you know you need materials right it makes sense but when you find a stick you got to find a jewel and I think the jewels are pretty rare. I've I have two emeralds, but I know an enemy dropped one, and it was the the enemies in armor. Talk about them a little later. Yeah, the jewels. The I think the emerald does lightning damage, if I'm correct, and the ruby obviously does fire. You need to draw a pattern in order for the magic to actually work. The magic works. Though when you draw the pattern. But there's also another way to where I think you could I haven't tried this yet. Maybe I will try it. If I remember to do it. You can theoretically you could run around the entire map. Hopefully your PC won't crash when this happens or your Oculus won't crash. You lead a bunch of enemies towards you, maybe in the world, maybe around ten of them. Do your magical spell, raise your 
your uh, thing to the sky and then slam it down on the floor. And maybe you'll take out a whole bunch. Magic is pretty powerful in this game. I haven't used it personally, but I've seen other YouTubers do it. Just, you know, watching randomness. And it's like, wow, that's pretty creative. So magic is pretty strong in this game, but it's... It's one of those things where you got to use it wisely, I believe. Because you could hold multiple weapons. You know, you got bow and arrows and stuff like that. The bow and arrows I haven't really tried. But I have seen some really clean shots online with it. So I, I've, I've even been told that the accuracy is way better than Blades and Sorcery. So, which is easy to believe. Even Skyrim VR's bow and arrow physics suck. The thing I love about this game the most... Or one of the many things I love about this game. There's really nothing I hate about it. But I'd be lying if I said there wasn't. But <laughs> the I love the fact that it's a workout. You gotta love that. It's it's a as a kid I've as a kid I've always wanted to be in the video game, whether that be Mario, whether that be Sonic. But when Dark Souls came out, at first. I wasn't aware of it because I wasn't really an internet guy. I was playing Skyrim. And even in Skyrim, I took my sweet ass time doing stuff. But when I went to college and talked to a few gamers and I asked, Hey, what is this game I hear about Dark Souls? Is it like Skyrim? They looked at me like, yeah, it's like Skyrim. I mean, it's fun. You know, they looked at me like a... I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And when I first got it, oh my gosh, I fell in love. I, I didn't know love was real until that game was in my Xbox 360 Gears of War edition, by the way. Unfortunately, it was lost in storage, but that's another story. Oh, man. So when playing this game, it just, I, oh, I felt alive. Then this game, when I played it, the way, usually I don't use my fists in games. Like, I mean... No reason why, it's just because you have to grind harder. And that's another thing about this game. The grinding is a little strange, but I'll get to that in a little bit. I used my fist, obviously, in the game because I wanted more of a challenge. I didn't want the challenge to end. That's because... In reasons, I'll explain later. But I'm using my fist, obviously. And, I, and it inspired me to replay Dark Souls using only my fist. Like, that... The fact that a game got me to re-download the ma remastered edition, Elden Ring, to start over and use my fist. The fact that this game made me want to do that, it's incredible. So, I feel like I'm there. It gives you a workout. You're going to be sore when you play this game. Especially if you're playing it the way I was playing it with just my fist. Bro, you're, you're going to be sore. Your shoulders are going to be sore. Your biceps are going to be sore. Your back muscles, especially the lower back, for some reason my lower back, and my abs were sore. I may look like a chunky dude, but I got some abs, trust. No, I mean, no, no, I know everybody does, but if I flex hard enough, you can feel it. <laughs> but, yeah, like, you will feel the workout, and that's what I loved about the game. I loved that it gave me such a workout. That it, I, I didn't get tired. If you watch one of my videos where I fought the giant... In that game, the that was basically the final boss. For now, I was I did that for almost two hours straight, bouncing around, acting like I was really fighting it. It gets you in the zone, like that's what I love about this game. I wish it was a Dark Souls. I wish it was Dark Souls VR, like legitimately. But I mean, this this game is good enough. It's good enough. It feels great. I don't have really too many issues with it playing. The only issue I had is my Oculus died. I don't do that cord attachment to the wall thing because I'm very I'm very dramatic when I move. I need to move. And I don't like being stationed. I know there's other types of things, but to be honest, I kind of just like my VR to tell me, "Hey, your battery's dying." Cuz it's like the it's like Oculus telling me, "Hey, yeah, take a break. Take a break. Let the system break, etc." But yeah, you will get a good workout. I mean, all you really need is an hour of exercise a day right get your hour of day from this game you're doing something fun and you're doing something active that's what video games need is activeness you know that is why i love vr games especially this vr game i don't like too many vr games but this one 
hits home for me. This one, I feel at home. Next to Skyrim VR. But this whole game, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I recommend it to anybody, anybody at all who likes VR. I mean, VR, VR is underrated. And that's another video for another day. That's a rant that'll probably get me into trouble, but hey, it's just opinion, right? But yes, I really recommend this game. I really do. I can't express how much I love it. I, I love the devs because I love the devs for just the, you know, they, they, they tried, they did it and they didn't disappoint. The thing that's disappointing is the people, the gamers today, they don't want to touch it. It's almost like there's there's it's almost like they're traumatized from Nintendo's Virtual Boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, oh, VR Dark Souls. Well, I played Virtual Boy, so I don't really want to touch that. Cause what if it's a disappointment? Like, the fuck? bro, get out of the fucking eighties. <laughs> but yeah, I love this game. I love it. I love it. I wish there was more to it. You know, but obviously. It's a small dev company, you know, they're trying their best and they gave, it was worth the $30. I'm actually upset that I got it on sale. I got it on sale because I was broke, but I wished I bought it full price to help the devs. That's how much I love this game that I'm willing to pay for DLC, pay a little extra. Hell, I'll even rebuy the game if it's oh, a remaster edition. I go, okay, you want to go that route? You want to go that route, Metal Cats? Okay, I'll buy it. Just promise me there'll be a part two. A Grim Lord 2. <laughs> oh, I hope there's a Grim Lord 2. I hope I really hope. I hope the best for Metal Cats. Metal Cats, if you're watching, much love. Much love to you guys. I, I hope the game succeeds. I hope it gets all the achievement in the world because basically your game is basically Dark Souls for VR. It really is. It really is. Just like Blades and Sorcery, as soon as that game is fucking finished, it's going to be the Skyrim of VR. Even though Skyrim has its own VR, but Blades and Sorcery, according to their fucking thing, they're going to have an open world sandbox like Skyrim. So, Blades and Sorcery is the Skyrim of Oculus. Grimlord is the Dark Souls of, of VR. It, I mean, oh... Grimlord is amazing. This is a weird rant video, I know, but thank you for sticking around. Now we come to the worst part of the video. The things I dislike about it. Uh, what was that noise? It, uh, the enemies are... One thing I don't like about the game is the enemies are not really, um... There's not enough enemies. There really isn't. There's... They're, they're kind of just the same f three? Is it three? I think, no, it's actually five. You got the Draugrs or Dra Draugrs, Draugrs. They're basically the undead zombie guys. You see them in Dark Souls, obviously. You got uh, Archers. The Archers are pretty accurate with their shots. Then you got, um, you got Knights in full plated armor, which are... Uh, Let's just say if you're fighting three, you're probably going to lose. But if you fight two, you got to have you kind of have a chance, especially if one's holding a shield because they're very hesitant with their attacks. But when you're fighting the armored plate guys and they have uh, great swords, you're in for a fight. But, you know, I, I, I didn't have too much trouble with them, but, you know, you will get into that. Next, you got the uh, sorcerers. They're basically necromancers. They, uh, they keep, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure they keep reviving the enemies. Because I've had moments where I was stuck fighting four zombies while an archer was shooting me. While the guy, the, ma the magician, I'm going to call him, or the necromancer, kept shooting purple magic at me. I'm assuming it's just, like, a dark magic kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that will... That will uh that will cause some problems. So you got to get rid of the necromancer before he keeps resummoning them, which is not easy because some of these monsters or these creatures, these NPCs, they don't move out of the way when you get close to them. You know they don't they don't fall like back like you would do in Skyrim. 
you actually just got to roam around them or hit them or whatever like that. But go for the legs. <laughs> I'm telling you, go for the legs. Uh, another thing I have that I don't like about it is the lack of environment. Obviously, it's a small game for now. So they, they put us in one environment. But I guess, too, with environment, I also don't like that there isn't any uh, atmosphere. When I when I say atmosphere, I mean uh, uh, maybe it involves environment. I'm probably using those words wrong. But no rain, you know, no rain, no thunder, no fog. Oh, my gosh. Fog would have been so good for this game. Fog would be freaking amazing. Dark Souls 2 had fog, and how scary was that fucking place? At least when you get the hang of it, you know where you're going, right? But yeah, I would have loved... And also nighttime, I would kind of wish that the game would do that to you. If you take too long in an area, it gets dark. And because it got dark, the the enemies are going to be stronger or crazier. You know, like it, it would have been cool if you had that. But I, like I said, I understand it's a small game for now. And possibly, I don't know the first thing about game design, but I think too much of anything is bad unless it's balanced out you know i think that's why games take so long is to find balancing so that way if you because i've i've heard that sometimes storms in a game use up so much memory or something that it crashes the game and it, it's a complete accident yeah sure it looks nice on paper but uh in progress with people's consoles or pcs it's gonna fuck up so i i get understand that but that's just a small thing. It's it's just a wish. It doesn't affect the game for me, but it would be fun. But obviously, the devs they they're gonna support. They want to support mods. Uh, I've I believe uh, one of them typed in my Twitter that oh with mod support it might happen because I said this is another thing I disliked about the environment that there's no that there's can we get places like a, a swamp or. A mountain with a snowy peak or a graveyard, you know, like a darker area as an underground volcano, something like that, you know, crazier place. Like if you played Kingsfield or if you played Dark Souls, you technically go to hell in Dark Souls. Like, will we get environments like that? I would love a swampy environment where you got to get through the swamp and get to another castle or go through the forest and get to another castle. But uh, one of the developers on Twitter said maybe with mod support. And I'm just kind of like, whoa, mod support, huh? <laughs> That's cool. That's cool that you guys are willing to let the, the mod community fuck with it. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, the lack of weather environment. Now, the biggest criticism I have of it right now, and I don't know if it's my settings. I've tried it. It still doesn't work. But if somebody wants to correct me, that'd be great. The lack of dodging in this game. Well, there isn't lack of dodging. Sorry. You you do dodge. You take a step back, which is actually accurate in sword fighting. You step back to dodge, you know, hits. If you watch plenty of sword fights, you can see that sometimes there's just a move you can't block, right? So you got to take a step back. And fencing, you know, fencing, they have that step back stuff. I'm not much of a sword fighter. I don't really know the first thing about it. I mean, I've done pretty well with a great sword, but... Not enough to keep me alive. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, okay. I, in one of my videos, I did try. If I can find it, I'll put it here. I did try to dodge one of the hits by one of the, the undead soldiers, which was uh, a guy holding a big hellbird. Or not a hellbird. A battle axe. He swings it. Is it horizontal? Is it horizontal? Or it's just a straight line across? Across from uh, left to right? I think that's horizontal. Well... He swung that, and I tried dodging it by, you know, I just tried dodging it by ducking underneath it, and it didn't work. I'm a, And I assume that maybe it's just my settings, because there is a setting where your head is the movement, and I think your analog is used for it too, but I tried that setting, and it still didn't work. I can't even jump over it. And so... That's one of my biggest, it's like, oh, that's kind of lame that you can't dodge it or jump over it. Because clearly these AI, they're not that stupid. They will they will trick you and try to fight you back. Especially the guys in the plated armor. They will, like, trick you. So it's kind of a disappointment that you can't dodge 
with your whole body, like move your head around or something like that. It, that is kind of lame, but you know, hey, I don't know the first thing about game design, especially in VR, so maybe that was just a handicap from the from you know memory and stuff like that. We can't have it all, right? But that's one of my biggest uh, you know confronts about it, if, if I want to say. But it, like I said, it doesn't take out the fun in the game. It's still fun. I still enjoy it. It works up a sweat. Another crappy thing is these freaking treasure chests, man. They don't want to open. They they have so much, I have trouble opening this. These things give me more trouble than a boss fight. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know if it's just a flaw or maybe I'm doing it wrong, but these chests need like a handlebar or something in the front. <laughs> Get good, Boggs. Yeah, I know. I can't even open a treasure chest. There's no hope for us. We're all doomed. Another thing I'm not too fond of is the level up system on here. You pretty much bring your souls or matter in this case. You go to this pretty girl and you here's this. What I like about it though, here's what I like about it. It reminds me of the sphere grid from Final Fantasy X. But the thing is though, I mean, it's pretty common sense, right? It's just common sense. But does see that plus symbol right there? You have to hit that uh, yellow plus plus symbol to get like your points from the matter. And it just, I don't know, just the UI for it, it it's kind of confusing. But, I mean, you'll get used to it after, like, two or three tries visiting. Because it does tell you that, oh, you lacked as many souls or matter. But it just, it seems so, I don't know, I, I can't describe it. it. It just, it doesn't feel good. You know, it, it, it's, it'd been much better if, uh, I don't know if this is just a nod to Final Fantasy X Sphere Grid, which I like. Don't get me wrong, I like this. It says, I kind of wish they would have just stuck with the Dark Souls style. You know, vitality, your uh, your strength, dexterity. I kind of wish for that. But, you know, it's not bad. It's just something that is a little off-putting. But, eh, maybe they'll fix it in the future. But, yeah, it's not that bad. But, yeah, it could use some work. Or maybe I just need to read better. But one thing... But I know I'm done. The video's almost over. But... I have one more good thing to say about the bosses in this game. The bosses were incredible. They were my favorite boss. He doesn't have a name, but I'm going to call him. <laughs> this isn't an insult to the devs. Again, I love this game. This isn't an insult. It's just a fun joke. Was the Dollar Tree fucking Dark Knight of Dark Knights of Gwyn. That boss was amazing. His movement, his style, his sword fight, and the fact that he changes it. The fact that he changes his his combat when he's half health, like a second phase almost, that was so cool. The the he when he swings his blade, like a flame comes out of it, but then the earth underneath turns into spikes. That is so cool. Cause see. Uh, ground magic or earth magic it doesn't get enough love in rpgs it really does not like okay like final fantasy 13 was one of my favorite final fantasies and there is an earth style uh i forgot what it's called there is an earth style move but it doesn't even work it doesn't even do elemental damage it, like flare if you guys remember final fantasy any final fantasy game flare and ultima they don't do they do non-elemental damage. It's just pure magic. And earth, there is an earth power. I can't remember who does it. I think everybody can do it, but I think hope. Hope and, and, and Final Fantasy 13 can do it. It just does non-elemental damage. It's not even strong. It's trash. But this game. This game makes it so like, whoa, what was that? You know, like I was so put off by and it does a lot of damage and i love it because it's because even when you fight the spoiler if you fight the giant in this game the giants do oh my god now that i think about it the golem that rock golem he used earth magic and i've noticed wow they all use some type of earth magic i just realized that and it's it's strong it's freaking strong and i love it I absolutely love it. Now I think about it, I love all the bosses now. I mean, the first boss, obviously, he was just to, you know, kind of trigger. Oh, this is what this is what to expect. Ha ha! Hell no! You got a motherfucker from, you got a Dollar Tree fucking Knights of Gwyn 
rocking fucking earth magic. Oh, wow. I love that boss. That boss was amazing. And I, I hope there's a... I, I actually... The dev posted something very cool in Twitter the other day. It was basically... Oh, wow. You guys ever played Killer Instinct? Omen? It looked like Omen and... Uh, Oh my god, what was his name? That giant skeleton boss in Dark Souls 3. I can't remember his name. Oh wow, I can't remember. It looks like him had a baby. That was an amazing character. It was all... Like, who, whoever is designing these monsters, they need a fucking... They need a pay raise, a pat on the back. They're... Dude, kiss his hand. Or kiss his or her hand, man. <laughs> wow. I'm so and and they teased me in Twitter. They're like, "Oh, maybe one day we'll get a dragon boss." And I was like, I wanted to say, I wanted to say, "Please name the dragon after me, please. Would you name it after me?" Call it <laughs> Call it Mox the World Eater, please. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that because I don't want you know what I mean, like when it's a small dev team, right? And uh they don't, you know, they're not getting a lot of recognition. So I don't want to put them in that position where, well, if we don't do what he says, he might unfollow us and we might lose a follower. I'm not saying they're like that, but I worry that some people are like that. And it's no offense. Sometimes you just, you know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't be in that position to ask, you know? I shouldn't be. It's just me being, it, the way I see it, it's just me being a brat. Not that I want to immortalize myself in a game. I don't care. It's just... I love the game so much that I, I guess I want to be part of it, but I guess I guess I'm part of it if I'm showing love and caring for it, you know. And anything helps, really, right? But yes, Metal Metal Cat Studios. This is an amazing game. I absolutely love it. In conclusion, if I can give this game a rating, I give it a nine out of ten. I absolutely love it. I can't get enough of it. Sometimes I play it on my downtime when Skyrim doesn't want to work because I have mods on it. And it's just like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for the chapter two and whatever they're doing. They're nine out of ten, guys. I highly recommend you buy it. I really do. If, you, if you're going to get into VR or considering getting into VR, get this game. This game is... it's. There's a demo for it on Oculus. It's a free demo. But you could also buy the base game for $30. Well, it's not the... Well, is it the... bit? Well, no, it's early access. I'm sorry. It's an early access game. $30. $30 that's a negotiable price. Like, that's a good price. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, it's not a full-fledged game. And the, the, that's one of the things I don't like about that. Because, you know, Grounded. Grounded was a cool little game. But the fact that it was early access, everybody got overpowered. Everybody did everything. And it's kind of like, well, you're adding new stuff, but... We're going through it like nothing. But this game... This game is like... Yeah. Keep leveling up. And you know... Yeah. I think it's going to get harder from there. I hope it gets harder from there. So... But yeah guys. This is a... Uh, this was my first uh, little review game rant. It's probably not the best. But I kind of want to throw my own style into it. Even though it looks lazy or looks... Uh, looks sloppy yeah i don't care I, I i i didn't script anything i just just going with my heart on this one metal cats much love thanks for thanks for the follow thanks for the talking on twitter thanks for this game thanks for giving showing love to a great rpg game that basically everybody copies now oh man that note thank you guys so much for watching this video sticking around yeah, it's not my usual style. I know it's a really uh, weird, uh, unscripted rant of stupidness, but I, that, I wanted to give it my authentic taste. I, mean, I don't like the whole script thing. I'd rather just go with what I remember from it and just go right ahead. So that way you can hear the passion and the love and the voice than just scripting it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can just tell when people script it, they don't mean just to sound clear and, you know, but I, I guess some people fuck with that. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I might do more of these. I don't want to call these a review. I'd like to call it a rant. Maybe rant review? I don't know. We'll see. I'll think of a clever name or... I don't know. But yeah, I highly recommend it. Anyway. Even if you're not a Souls fan. You just want to get 
have some fun. The game's fun. Much love. Take care.